Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barron's. It was a nice sunny end to the day on Saturday, a day that started out pretty cloudy and cool, got nicer and more mild by the afternoon. And tomorrow we're going to be both warmer and sunnier than what we had today. So some really good weather as we head into the second half of the weekend. Speaking of the sunshine, here is a picture that Kale took at Pier Marquette Beach as the sun came out this evening. Still a few clouds hanging around out there, but those clouds will dissipate as we head into the evening and we'll be pretty much clear all through the overnight. Of course, we'd love to share your photos here at 13 on your side. You can send them to me on social media. Meteorologist Michael Barron's on Facebook and at Mike Barron's WX on Twitter and on Instagram. Those high temperatures today creeped up into the 60s, 67 in Grand Rapids. In fact, 68 Muskegon, 63 in Holland, where the clouds hung around longer to the south. Temperatures just a couple degrees cooler. On target forecast tracker told you 68 hit 67. That's inside three degrees. Now eight days in a row of just three misses in the last month of forecasting. As of about uh, nine o'clock, temperatures were cooling, but tomorrow again, we are looking at warmer weather ahead. That's why 13 weather ball is lit up in red a view of that 13 weather ball of course sponsored by countryside and greenhouse of Allendale those temperatures again cooling down to 57 in Fremont right now 51 Muskegon 61 in Grand Rapids again as we headed toward the 10 o'clock hour the winds out there calming down they were a little breezy earlier today gusting as high as the 20s now down to about 5 to 15 miles per hour we'll watch the winds continue to calm as we head through tonight with clear skies pushing through we'll see winds around three to 8 miles per hour overnight. Temperatures falling into the 40s tomorrow up into the 70s with plenty of sunshine on the way for your Sunday. Speaking of which, we'll start the day around 46 degrees as clear skies lead to cool temperatures. Sunny skies all day Sunday up a high of 76 by the afternoon will increase the cloud cover for Monday, possibly a stray sprinkle toward US 10, but that would be about it. Otherwise, mostly dry and even warmer up to 78 for Monday afternoon. Radar out there going to be quite quiet as we head through this week. Easy week for the radar. The rain chances we had earlier today are now far off to the east, as are the clouds. Otherwise, looking at a dry forecast for much of the next 10 days. Hour by hour forecast through tonight shows the clear skies that stay firm through Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon. By Sunday evening, a few clouds may develop across the region. Mostly clear skies, though, as we head through Sunday night and into early Monday. Monday itself will bring a little bit more cloud cover, partly cloudy. Again, that stray sprinkle up north is a small possibility, but not one that we're really counting on here. As we head into Monday evening, the skies clear out once again. We'll be mostly sunny as we head through the day on Tuesday, but Tuesday into Wednesday will bring a small chance for rain that may develop a few showers on Wednesday itself. But again, those chances very small, really a dry 10 day forecast is what we're looking at over the next uh, well. 10 days. We're looking at temperatures for your Sunday, hazy and sunny with 60s and 70s along the lake shore. Those temperatures a little bit warmer as you get away from the water. Mid 70s for our northern zones with temperatures also in the mid 70s from Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. <laughs> Temperatures rise to about 81 on Tuesday before that small rain chance and a front of colder air comes through for Wednesday. That'll drop temperatures back to normal around 72. We bottom out at 70 on Thursday with morning temperatures starting in the 40s, but then it climbs as we head toward the holiday weekend. Memorial Day, the warmest day in our forecast right now, looking mostly sunny, a little bit humid and with a high that reaches the mid 80s. And speaking of that holiday, we're just a week away from Memorial Day and airports across the country are bracing for a rush of passengers ahead of the holiday weekend. One of the busiest hubs in the country is now asking for extra security to deal with unruly passengers. ABC News's Phil Lipoff is at Newark Liberty Airport in New Jersey with the story. Airports across the country are preparing for the onslaught of holiday travel as Memorial Day weekend approaches. 
This time, much of the madness coming from unruly passengers. It is pretty crazy. Take a look at this police body camera video taken in Hartsfield Jackson Airport last week, where a man was punched in an alleged unprovoked attack by another passenger while waiting for the plane train. Relax, relax, <laughs> relax. You're good. The man was charged with assault. The situation is so intense that the airport general manager went before Atlanta city officials to discuss safety and money for extra security. We have seen an increase in these type of behavior in Atlanta airport and across the industry. And reps for Hartsfield Jackson Airport telling ABC News in a statement, ATL's top priority is to provide a safe and efficient operation. The chaos not just on the ground, but in the air too. The FAA reporting this year alone 670 incidents involving unruly passengers on board airplanes. On this United Airlines flight, an angry passenger attacking a staff member in an alleged dispute over his seat assignment. Fists flying in the cabin, no charges reported. Oh my God. If there's a short answer, I think it's to become less tolerant if there's any tolerance at all of this kind of behavior, especially on the part of the airlines and airports for anybody who refuses to follow an order in flight. Back to Atlanta now, and the director of the airport there says when he went before the city council to talk about this issue, he told them that he had a conference call with the top 20 airport directors in the country to talk about this disturbing trend, and they say they are concerned as well. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, Newark Airport. And when it comes to upcoming travel, especially as we head into the summer, staying on top of potential heat waves will be a must. Average temperatures have warmed across the U.S. and the globe, with extreme heat days occurring more often, according to nonprofit science group Climate Central. ABC News' Ginger Z explains in this week's Climate Minute. Summer gets hot. That's how the earth has always worked. But human-induced climate change is amplifying the higher temperature extremes. An analysis by the nonprofit science group Climate Central found that 232 U.S. cities are seeing more risky heat days since 1970. That's an average of 21 more days every year. And it's not all about the triple-digit temperatures. Any time temps get much higher than what the community is used to, it can be dangerous because they may not be prepared. They haven't seen it before, even if it doesn't seem that hot to someone who lives, say, in Texas. Climate change has made these events to become more, more frequent. The number of days with temperatures that have exceeded 100 degrees Fahrenheit has increased by about 50 percent since the 1950s. And so we're just seeing that uh, climate change is making these events much more common. Extreme heat kills. 164 people die every year, according to the National Weather Service. It's the deadliest weather hazard in the United States. Heat has been referred to as a silent killer because people don't necessarily know what are the warning signs that they should be watching out for in terms of uh, heat stroke and dehydration and other health-related impacts due to exposure to heat. And the CDC says that staying indoors, staying hydrated, cutting down on time outside, and then staying up to date on your weather alerts is what will help keep you safe. With this Climate Minute, I'm Ginger Z. Finally tonight, let's take a look at some trending stories. First today was World Turtle Day. Here locally, John Ball Zoo is working to raise awareness about its conservation efforts statewide. The zoo is creating a rare turtle survey with the help of the Michigan Natural Features Inventory. Data from spotted turtles at eight sites across the state will be gathered to help with long-term conservation efforts. Next, this Colorado homeowner had some unexpected guests at her door. A video filmed by Carrie Baumgartner shows a moment when these two black bears tried to get inside. Even though bears aren't expected to knock, they apparently knew how to open the front door. Luckily, the woman reacted quickly, banging on the window to scare the bears off. Colorado Parks and Wildlife says the black bears are relentless in their pursuit of food and reminded everyone to bear proof their homes. And finally, the bones of a mastodon that roamed Kent County around 13,000 years ago are now on display at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. The Clapp family mastodon's bones were found by workers digging a drainage ditch about 30 miles north of Grand Rapids last year. Mastodons are similar to mammoths, but are shorter and stockier. The museum says it was already planning to update an exhibit from that same time period, so the find came just in time. What we wanted to do with this exhibit was create, you know, a localized 
view of the Ice Age so people can understand that the Ice Age did happen here in Michigan. And what better way to do that than to show off that we have a Mastodon skeleton found right here in Kent County. The Mastodon exhibit opened on Saturday and will last through September 3rd. And now that you're up to date with the latest forecast and some weather and travel stories from around the country and right here in West Michigan, you can always find more online at 13onyourside.com or by downloading the 13 on your side news and weather apps. For now, though, thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.